pleasure for me to be here and spend the next um, 20 minutes with you presenting to um, some latest news, more or less latest for sure in Obula. Um, by the way, you're very welcome to visit our booth. We have a lot of equipment downstairs and uh, some news as well for latest machinery. Um, not only to talk about it with you today, but also to see and to make a touch and feel. With uh, you ran our passion and rail logistics, uh, I would like to explain you the idea of Brüller. What, what is it? Rail logistics was founded uh, as a business unit within the Brüller Group roughly one year ago. The main step for this was to uh, overtake of the company Schmidt Sega as a South German machinery company which was uh, focused on silo business, the so grain business, the storage business. What do we do at um, Bühler Logistics? Within this business unit, we have focused our strength on complete solution from the very beginning of the value chain. That means for us, when the grain comes from the field, and when I talk about grain, I mainly talk, basically I talk about all fruits, but mainly wheat, corn, paddy, grape, but of course barley as well. So the full solution provider is more or less the vocabulary which fits very well to us. However, it does not mean that we build and project and engineer both facilities, but also deliver single machines. What was the reason to, to buy Shimizera and what was the reason to build this new um, business unit? The market around us, the world around us change and so we need to serve the demand of the world changing and we focus or we generate four reasons for these changes. The first change is that, uh, by the way, all of these four steps are based on food safety. Food safety is within our organization a very high level uh, wording and it's very important to all units. We all follow the rules of food safety. That's why we see the world population will decline is one of the main reasons. So we have to feed a lot of much more people than we have right now. We just passed a few weeks ago the 7 billion. And by 2050, it will be 9 billion or even 10 billion. Nobody knows exactly, but it will be tremendous higher figure. The second issue is that the climate will change. So the harvest will be much more difficult. Of course, we have to, we have to all support from the fertilizer. We have to support in the field. But anyway, what we saw in, in Russia last year, half crops and millions of tons can, um, can be wasted due to not enough rain or too much sun. So this will change as well. The third reason, and that's why we're here in Bangkok, whole value chain will move. That means that the people and the growth of the worldwide population is not exactly there where the grain grows. So the ways of grain all over the world will, move, uh, will change dramatically. Where do the people grow? Asia, Africa, let's say South America as well, but when we focus here on Asia, we, don't, we do not think that uh, the crop will be enough so that all the imports from Australia, from the States, doesn't matter from which countries will rise, that means that the import will be high. And the fourth reason is, as I said very at the very beginning, food safety is itself. Depends on the country, if it's Thailand or China or Germany or Switzerland, each country has a own definition of food safety. However, one of the main reasons of food safety is to reduce waste, follow one chain, to reduce leaks in the chain, to reduce diseases, and everything what belongs to food safety. Traceability is one of the reasons as well. So what do we have right now in the Bula world? Now we can really cover the entire food value chain within because we founded real logistics. When you take a look at the right side, you see malting plants, rice plants, milling and feed. This is what Bula is or was known so far. All the processing equipment. But now we have to tell the world, Bula is more. Bula is also storaging. Bula can handle and handle silos and has the competence of clean, dry, and storage in the proper way the grain. So when you see at the 
on the very left, you see the minus the, the rain storages it comes from the field. Uh, as I said, uh, let's say in the states, Australia or Russia, they export it, so it goes to a terminal. Then goes um, mainly in the big amounts goes via ships all over the world. Then you need a harbor. Then you need an import harbor here in, in Thailand, in the Philippines, in China. So you need to unload it, put it in the terminal, and then pass it through to the processing. And uh, we are proud that we can cover really the whole chain. The rail logistics business unit can be divided by more market segments, we call it. These are collection points, terminals, vaulting, and rail components. However, I would very much like to, to focus on the first three ones because they are the typical, uh, all three steps that I explained in the sheet before. What are the strengths of what's the focus on collection points? By the way, collection point is, uh, I'm the head of the collection point market segment. So for the worldwide side of business, I'm the responsible person within our organization. Collection points, we focus on uh, the harvest business. So all the medium size, small size, but also big size storages, including drying, cleaning, dusting, everything that is necessary will need to be done with the paddy, with the grain, when it comes from the field to storage in, in a proper way. It doesn't matter if it's for a week, for a day, or for eight months. So this is the focus on it. Terminals are very much focused on the seaside, so everything that is connected to ship loading and unloading, in the silo direct in the, direct in the harbor. So you might ask yourself, what is the difference between collection points and terminals in regards of storage? One huge difference, transport and speed. When you say the typical collection point, when you talk uh, about speed and capacity, we talk about 150, 200, 250 tons per hour. When you look at the terminal, when the ship is unloaded and loaded, we're talking up to 2,500 tons per hour. So the big difference in these two market segments. And we also combined malting, third market segment. Malting was and still is a huge part. By the way, former days, Brüder and Schmizeda were competitors, and with this fusion of Schmizeda and, and Brüder, Malting was uh, put it together and it's a single and own market segment within rail logistics. And the focus is on making malt, everything that is necessary. The malt is the basic ingredient for the beer brewers all over the world, also Chang and Sing in Thailand. So, in the next few slides, I just want to give you some impression, more details. I don't want to go over each detail. But give you an impression of what does it mean, grain logistics, you know, more than my words in the last few minutes. So we have storages. Storages are different. It can be a silo storage, can be a flat storage, can be a concrete storage or a steel storage. The different ways and there is not a, the best way is always the customer most economic way. Let's say this way. Because each of this storage system has its advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. In a certain way. Last weekend, I went around in the northern part of Thailand. I visited a lot of customers, rice millers, and what I saw impressed me very much. I saw a lot of huge, brand new flat storages. I mean, a flat storage with a dimension of 250 meters by 100 meters is already a huge one with capacity up to 500,000 tons. So, Thailand is improving very well in this case. Processing system, meaning one of the main business of collection point. Processing system, how grain logistics understand is a street clean main cleaning in a different way. We also cover the business field of the conveyor equipment. Conveyors are mainly known as a bucket elevator, screw conveyor, the belt conveyor and the chain conveyor. Chain conveyor, you can say they are different. Yes, you are absolutely right. The milling colleagues using different chain conveyors and the feed colleagues, although we from Green Logistics um, deliver all this equipment to our colleagues. Drying system, a photo of the dry disappear. However, what I learned, drying is very, very important in Thailand as well. It didn't surprise me, but I saw with my eyes and seeing is believing, as you know. So this is one of our major um, core competences, drying. We have had a huge experience with paddy drying in India, making over the last five years. We started our experience in, in China. Last Last year, and I'm pretty much sure that we will soon have also the first um, pilot project in Thailand. The dusting aspiration system, also a huge power competence of rail logistics, although it's not that much, not that, that, that important for Thailand. However, I should let you know that aspiration can be basically divided into spot aspiration. We can, we can use it for each chain conveyor, single module aspiration, and uh, central aspiration or intake aspiration as well. So we are building.
huge ship loaders and unloaders. However, we also built the barge unloaders. Barge unloaders is in uh, around 200-300 tons per hour. Even the ship unloaders, the big Panama shippers with uh, ships with 50, 60, 70 thousand tons. We're talking about 2,000, 2,500 tons per hour. Just want to give you an impression what we're talking about. We're talking really about a single machine for 20, 30,000 euro. But we're also talking about full projects like this one in Brazil of about more than 100 million. This one is a very special project. Why? Because this project is not a, only a grain logistics project. It means it's a terminal ship loader, it's a storage unit, but this is for the builder, it was almost the whole builder company was involved because behind this storage unit, there's a milling factory, there's a pasta fa factory as well, and everything was built by us in the Turkey solution. This is a, already a very big collection point in, in Russia, 100,000 ton exactly, was built last year, and this one I choose, why? Because this customer is a typical uh, feed miller, so this is a silo which is built now and the feed milling is under construction in this moment. This give you an impression how we go in hand in hand, how we handle the whole projects. You would find within this, uh, you can see the very low part is the intake pit for two trucks. Then you would find the dryer, the machine house and the smaller silos are the pre built silos for the, for the dryer and the big storage in silos afterwards. Here's some smaller solution in Germany. This is also a mixed customer, silo customer and biomass customer. This customer is making oil out of rape. Different example, different continent, South Africa, Durham, ship unloader, ship loader and a silo terminal in the backhand storage. Thank you very much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. I hope I could give you a little impression about Bula Green Logistics and uh, you're really very welcome to visit us at our booth.